Prince, the life of Asher, the son of Shem, is shrouded in mystery. However, knowing some details of it can shine the light on many ancient events. Let's take a look at it now. It was around the time after the flood of Noah, which occurred in the year 3298 BC. Soon afterwards, Noah's son Shem, known as King Bharat, established ancient India, and Asher was one of his sons. However, in Genesis 10:11, we find him in Shinar in southern Mesopotamia. Being the son of Shem, he was a pure Semite. However, he was in the company of Nimrod and his people who were dark Kushites. The Bible states that he moved up north and built Nineveh, the city of Nimrod. It is interesting to note that there was something brewing between Nineveh and Bactria as early as 3200 to 3150 BC. For some reason, Nimrod had laid siege to the city of Bactria, which was long before it became Noah's son Ham's city. Nimrod couldn't break through, and the water nymph Inanna, that is Kari, from Lucifer's abyss, helped him gain the victory. Soon she became his queen and murdered him. She was the one who took over Nimrod's throne as Queen Samiramis of Assyria waged war against ancient India and lost. Now, Nimrod's siege against Bactria could be a part of the Devas versus Ashuras conflict we find in the Hindu Vedas because being the descendants of Shem, these two groups are of the same Semitic stock, even though Nimrod and his people were with one of the factions, namely Ashers. Then the Ashers descendants started mixing with the Kushite stock of Nimrod's people, which produced a fearsome looking Assyrian race like the ones you see here. This is the reason Hindus depict them as dark giants. That doesn't mean that the Indian Semites remained pure either. They were also mixing with the Japhetic tribes of Kurus and Purus who had descended from the Siberian region who were even fairer than them. However, there was a glitch. Kurus did not share the godly values of Noah's son Shem. They were promiscuous, probably from huddling in close quarters in the Siberian cold for warmth. Hindu epic Mahabharata states that it was approved by the rishis and the sanction of antiquity. Later, when Shem passed away in the year, 2796 BC, they took over the kingdom that Shem established and called it Kuru dynasty. It is during their rule the Mahabharata war took place around 2700 BC or a little later. The Mahabharata war was also called Kurukshetra war, meaning the war that took place at Kuru's dead. Meanwhile, the dark Kushites such as Rama and Krishna were already in India and the mixing of the Indian population with theirs produced the brown population that we find in India today. Now, let's try to get a sense of the timeline of events. Noah's flood occurred first. Siege of Bactria was next. That is, when Nimrod had established many city-states in the Mesopotamian region, as it says in the Bible. Inanna the Kali, killing Nimrod the Shiva, her war against ancient India and all that followed. Then Ham arrived in India and Dionysus came pursuing him because Ham had killed Dionysus' father. Sensing the danger, 
Ham escaped from Bactria and formed his own religion. Again, revisiting the time when Inanna killed King Nimrod, there had been a rift among the people of Nineveh as Nimrod loyalists and Queen Semiramis followers. That is what translates as Shaivism and Shaktism within the Hindu religion. Mahashivratri is the commemoration of the night when Inanna, who is Kali, killed Nimrod, known as Shiva in Hinduism. I believe at this point a lot of Nimrod loyalists who were the descendants of Asher must have moved out from Nineveh into the region of Bactria. In case you wonder why, it is because when Ham arrived in Bactria later and started his own religion, he called its god Ahura Mazda. It's because the people there had been the descendants of Asher who respected him as their ancestor. The words Ahura and Ashura are one and the same. So, God Ahura Mazda is none other than Asher, the master, an ancestral god like Rama, Krishna, etc. of the Indians. Now, how did Mazda become the master, one may ask. It is possible because those were the times when languages were still forming, borrowing words from each other. For example, King Sargon of Akkad of the same time period called himself Sharukin, meaning the legitimate or the faithful ruler from which words like Shah, Tsar and King emerged. Same way Mazda could be master as well. Now, it is worth noting that Asher was also regarded highly among the Assyrians as their founder and it was a custom that the governmental proceedings of Assyria were read out loud each morning in front of Asher's statue until the time of Islamic invasion for over three and a half millennia. Thus, the people from India all the way to Assyria have the influence of Shem the Aryan having migrated originally from the Arata region of Armenia near Mount Ararat where Noah's Ark landed. This is also why both the Indians and the Iranians claim that they are the original Aryans. Well, there are a lot of points to consider here. However, this is how I make sense of what happened to Asher in God's own history, friends. Thanks for watching.